Introducing the Inner Peace Method, an integrative series for transformation and cellular change. Born from the Inner Pathic Process and Dr. Goodall, this series combines all the elements of the Inner Pathic Process and includes the sacraments of earth, plants, and shamanic healing. In other words, science, ancient wisdom, gifts from the elders, the guides, and all of Dr. Goodall's methods simultaneously coming together to empower each of you with the tools and clarity needed along your journey. You create permanent and cellular change to have more clarity, consciousness, health, wellness, youth, vitality, and wholeness. Most of all, you will live in your center and know always the voice of your inner wisdom. You will not only hear the call of your soul, you will gain the tools to answer. Purchase your own CD and liquid copal on innerpathicprocess.com. Learn to manifest your desires and empower your life. Are you awake? What is your soul's calling? What is real? What is now? Only when we are fully awake can we begin to separate the past from our potential. Awareness is the key, and Dr. Gudal Kaba's Interpathic Process creates this awareness. Dr. From just to see me. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Are You Awake? I am Dr. Gudal Kaba on Energy Talk Radio. It's so nice that you're all tuned in. Appreciate your attention and listening. We've had so many emails since we've started the new sh- season. Thank you so much. Keep writing. Mm-hmm. Send them to Goldal at innerpathicprocess.com or Ken at innerpathicprocess.com. Speaking of Ken, he's our guest today. Ken Davis, co founder. So good to be back. Yes. Hi, Ken, co founder of Interpathic Process. He and I, we started off on a life journey, each individually, you know, doing our thing, finding our way to our inner voice. At least for me, that was true. Discovering always more healing and more growth and knowing that it was you know, unending, infinitum, how far one could go, the potentiality. And when I met Ken, I think about 10 years ago, you were on that same path and the way that we worked and the way that we channeled, the way that we meditated, the way that we were healing intuitive, it was almost identical. Was, I think you said we were cut from the same cloth. Cut from the same cloth, clearly a syn- synchronistic process and also true for me as well about connecting to my inner voice in my relationship with you. Yeah, so it was since that time, the birth of the interpathic process is what has emerged. Our work together on ourselves, on with each other, helping each other grow, working with ourselves, working with clients, teaching, doing seminars, workshops, writing, creating exercises, meditations, and healing. And one day, all of our efforts came to fruition in the interpathic process, which is wonderful because but at the end of the day, what the interpathic process is, and you often hear me say this, the bridge between East-West, body-mind, science, and spirit, and the fusion of all the modalities that come from those dimensions and disciplines of life. And when you pull all that together the way that we do, because we do it within what's in the highest good of each individual, working with what's in the highest good of their soul for the healing of their soul body, what happens is what comes forth, what is birthed for that person from all of this is a unique whole. It's a unique new way each time of using all those modalities, which is what makes the interpathic process so unique, I think. I think so as well. It connects us to both ourselves and what's outside of ourselves that's important for us to build. Absolutely. So in the end, what you're saying is how to listen to our inner voice. So many of us give away our power and we turn over, you know, to books and to authority figures, what we should do next. I can't tell you how many times in a day I hear, well, what should I do? What should I do? And it saddens me because really in the end, what we want is what should I do to be asked inside? Right. How do we help? I think the path around the use listening to the soul helps people take charge of their own lives and lets them listen to what's true inside of themselves so that they can have a sense of how they want to move forward in the world. Exactly. Absolutely. And today's topic with that is the big butts. The big butts, yes. Yes. We, we were told that it's okay to say but on international radio. So really, what are the big butts? The butts that get in our way 
how do we get what we want without the big but? So many of us in the world live with, yes, but. I would do that, but. I want to do that, but. How do we get past the buts? And what's interesting is those are excuses. We know they're excuses. We all get it. You know, what genuinely holds us back is ourselves. We've heard it over and over again. We've read it in every self-help book there is. But the same pattern thinking that has got us to where we are is more frustrating. You know, we say things like, and we read things so often, get out of your own way, stop making excuses, stop complaining. If you don't like it, do something about it. How often do people hear that? I think it's actually very common. There's a way in which we're such a culture of willpower that we think somehow if we just force ourselves to do something that we are inherently lazy or unintelligent if we just push ourselves harder. Kind of like some uh, a, poor, a poor example of a coach who doesn't really know how to coach, how to teach something to be different, but just knows how to push people in, in some way. And that just ends up in us obviously feeling stuck. And that's where the yes buts come from, where the big buts come from. Yes, that the yes but, the no but, the only if but. Oh, right, the only if but. All those things, right. I think I used to be famous for the only if but. The only if the world was a certain way or God would do this or something. Then. You know, the big one is only if I were 10 pounds thinner. Oh, yes, right, you because know? if I was 10 pounds thinner, then the world would come to me and everything would be okay. That's right, and only if I had you know, won the lottery, these big things that really mean nothing. But at the same time, the very same excuses, the yes buts, actually end up making us feel bad about ourselves because in our culture, the what you're talking about being so will-driven is if we would get out of our own way, things would be fine. And since I haven't gotten out of my own way, things aren't fine, therefore it's my fault. Yes, and it, it, it's as if somehow we had an inherent capacity that we could just push ourselves to rather than learn what our inherent, inherent capacity is and use it. Most of these things, I think, and probably you agree, are driven by kind of like an automatic processing that we've learned through the world that both moves us forward and also paralyzes us when we need to sort of slow ourselves down, like don't cross the street, right, or yeah. don't do this or don't do that. So they become those kinds of truths. Right. They become a truth which then gets, I think, expanded to a broader world. It's not okay to do this. It's not okay to do that. And and rather than this is what you should do or this is what will work, we have so many don'ts and so many not okays that people never learn to do the do. So what happens then, what I'm hearing you say, is that we actually stop looking for what is underneath the it's Like we don't mine for the, va for the valuable gem, if you will, of what's really underneath that. I think, we just say the words and move forward. I think that's true. I think we get principles of life that become automatic in us that maybe are originally designed to protect us from hurting ourselves or doing something we don't know how to do that it serve a purpose in that moment but then become kind of connected to things that we could learn how to do that could be important for us that are really just a matter of our trusting ourselves or learning say a new skill so if we don't take a moment to hear our butts right then we just keep being the same thing over and over again, feeling the same way. But inevitably, we get beaten down by our own butts, and we feel bad about ourselves. Because they get stuck they inside get stuck. of us. And then we feel bad because we haven't done anything. But really, if we look underneath, if we look for what shines underneath that, there are doubts and fears and uncertainty, insurmountable kinds of stuff that we don't even know is underneath there. That's right. Uh, things that are unfinished in some kind of way, you know, maybe in our own family growing up, it wasn't okay if you did this kind of thing because you're not allowed to make noise or something because it's too challenging for a parent who needs to sleep. And we take that inside of us and we make it, well, I would do this, but I'm not allowed to talk for myself. Or I would do this, but if I do this, I will get in trouble. Or if only my parents would do this, then everything would be okay. And so... We take that from childhood, and it generalizes, to use psychological speak. It grows into right. all these other places where it becomes automatic. It's such an automatic, and, and so quick. You know, the automatic processing happens instantaneously. We don't stop to reflect upon what we're saying to ourselves. It just pops out because that, that makes it more effective, but also makes it more difficult for us to change. 
And because it's so automatic, we don't even hear it unless somebody no. points it out. You just yeah. butted me. That's right. It's, beneath, it's, whole, it's wholly beneath the surface. That's it's true. So beneath the surface. So then with all that chatter that goes on in our head, the if onlys or the yes buts, I want that but, then we can never really know ourselves. And, and in that kind of way, in sort of an ironic way, right, the buts are important to us because they serve a purpose, and they, they at least tell us that there's some level of need that we're not paying attention to. So the first thing someone can do is listen to their butts, like, what is my big butt? Right. What is the language of, or the feeling? Because sometimes I think the butts don't happen just in words we tell ourselves. Sometimes I think the butts happen to something we feel in our body. So we get ready to do something, and we get feel our chest constrict or our pelvis tightens or we get sweaty or something and that serves the same sort of way our body is telling us to stop so there's something fearful or i'm not prepared for something about that that then the voice of the butt shows up and yes. all of that happens instantaneously I right i mean so. it's so quick right. if it would happen the way you just described it at that pace i think we'd catch it Right. We'd say, oh, I'm starting to have my chest tighten. Oh, I'm starting to feel sweaty. We would say, right. I wonder, well, maybe we wouldn't say, but we should say, I wonder what this is about, right? We should be thoughtful and curious about it rather than say, oh, my God, here this comes. Well, one of the goals of the interpathic process when we talk about listening to the call of your soul, for example, is about that. Not so much maybe a should, to not should on people, but mostly how do I learn to do that and to make that more an important part of my process listen to the yes buts, and then underneath that feel, maybe try to feel what's going on in the body. Sure, because there's many avenues that would help us figure out how we could make different choices, how we could pay attention to ourselves differently, how we could actually get the gem that's hidden yes. beneath the, our process that paralyzes us sometimes. Or it, for some people, I think it makes them kind of more chaotic inside. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right about that chaos. And there is a way in which in our culture, taking the time to learn that hasn't been part of what we do. So how many times do you run into people, and I know that I do, that when we ask them to try to get underneath for the gem, listen to the yes, but, but then do what you're saying, like find the chest constriction or the shortness of breath that are so disconnected from their bodily experience. Well, I think, you know, I think it, in the way the brain works, the automatic process is so much more effective in terms of like the use of ATP glucose in the body, right? So it's like driving a car. When we first learned to drive a car, my son didn't learn that long ago. It, it, it's very tiring. You have to think about everything you do. Do I put the car this way or do I look in the mirror? Then that automatic part of our brain takes over. He can get in the car and drive wherever he wants and feel completely at ease. And or so not I even think, think about it. Not even think about it. I can't even remember oh, putting my keys in the, and doing this. Mm -hmm. and, and I think our brain does that with everything. It does that just with not with things that it's functional with, but how we relate to other people, how we decide what's okay for us, how we put our ceiling for relationships or um, economics or anything. So there's a yes button practically everything we do. And on that note, we're going to go right into a break. Okay. And we're going to come back and we're going to talk some more about how our big butts get in the way of our life. Our big butts get in the way. And how we can find that automatic process. Be right back. And just remember, interpathicprocess.com. New website. It's wonderful. Go meander through. It has multiple layers, video, all kinds of entertaining stuff. And if you want to reach Ken or I, Goldal or Ken, at interpathicprocess.com. Be right back. Energy Talk Radio, fun and inspirational radio that makes a difference. Now available, Dr. Goodall's Peace, Presence, and Balance CD with Liquid Copal. Using the principles of the Interpathic Process, Dr. Goodall has created a product series of audio CD with an aromatic Native American Liquid Copal. The combination of CD exercise and copal create an intense connection and immediate, multi-dimensional shift. A shift that will permanently change all dimensions of self toward peace, presence, and balance. 
Purchase your own version of peace, presence, and balance on innerpathicprocess.com and find out how quickly you'll experience a whole body cellular transformation. Click now to order yours. And welcome back to Are You Awake? I'm your host, Dr. Gudal Kaba. It's so wonderful to be doing these shows again. The amount of emails and phone calls that we've been receiving, it really is amazing. People from all over the world, we thank you for listening. And most importantly, the goal of this show is for people to walk away, all of you that are listening, to walk away having learned, having grown, having felt a connection to myself and for all of those that are on the show, to Ken, who's our guest today, co-founder of Interpathic Process with myself. Our goal is always to help the healing of the world. We're so Mm -hmm. malnourished in so many ways that in the small way, if we can contribute all of our life process through the Interpathic Process to you, then we've at least done something. I feel at least Are You Awake has done its job. So welcome back, Dr. Ken. We're talking about butts today. The yes buts, the, the yes big buts, buts the, the no only buts. if buts, the no buts, yes. And we were talking about how, and you mentioned so succinctly, the bodily process, which is a very important part of our work in the interpathic process, is to help people. When we talk about listening to the call of the soul, it's not always this voice that comes out of nowhere. It's an inner resonance, and often through sensation, through physical experience. So maybe you can talk a little bit about how that's data and, and what, how to help people get there. Well, I do think that our bodies and our minds, we've, you've talked about the bridge between those things. I think that it, the bodies and the minds are often responding to situations in the same kind of way. Sometimes it's easier to use the mind. Some people are very tuned into their thinking, and they if they're trying to track what they're thinking they can do it easily. They can say to you, well, yes, I'm aware that I said, well, that would be okay, but, or I, that would be only if that would be okay. And some people can tune into their bodies a lot easier. If you ask them to stop and slow down, they can say, well, I guess I guess my chest was tightening. I felt my throat constricting. It's better, obviously, if the more data you can have about yourself, the better off you are, because then you have more avenues to pay attention. So people present with a dominant experience, either cognitive, intellectual, they can hear themselves thinking stronger, and some people present with a bodily experience. I think that that has been true. I mean, okay. I, we can go back to things like Myers-Briggs type, where it talks about thinking types and okay. feeling types, and feeling types often seem very connected to bodily and emotional experience, and thinking types can often identify their thinking more easily than they can identify what goes on in their feelings or their body. I think both avenues are relevant and Developing both in one person is even more relevant. That's just where I was going to head. So if you have a thinking type using that language, it becomes more helpful to first maybe say, okay, find your butts, listen for your butts. Gives you an avenue. Gives you an avenue. And then look before that, what happened inside of your body and help them learn that. And vice versa for the others. Start with what's happening in your body. Now pay attention to what you're thinking. Now I know that I've really simplified that. I, yes, that would be an understatement, perhaps. I think yes. the hardest part of that for most people is to first have a non-judgment about themselves because many of us carry a judgment about what we should think or if we should use thinking. Some people d- sort of carry a judgment about, is it okay for me to have feelings? Are feelings relevant? Yes. There's a way in which you have to first start with just, again, sort of saying, this is what my experience is. It's okay, whatever my experience is. So helping yourself be that accepting will help one then hear their butts. Because if we look to, we've spent a lot of time on this show today talking about how these butts, the if onlys, the yes butts get in our way and they're so automatic. Yet underneath them are doubts and fears and shames, unfinished business, old wounds, old traumas. All important things for people to heal. The most important things maybe even. So to help the audience to help the listener do that for themselves because if we can discover what's unfinished what we're really saying is that the butts are your friends that's right we're saying the butts are not only something about a particular thing but they're also about your process in your life exactly so they give you data and information so you don't want to disregard your butts you don't want to say oh i shouldn't say that but more listen to what 
that part of you is trying to tell you. Yeah, and to be ju non-judgmental, because really, I think the only way to hear something and what's beneath it, whether it's protecting us, whether we're feeling powerless, whether we have a our life, we turn over power to other people, because really, in a way, yes, but is in a place where we may feel powerless. We may have, or we may have had a parent or someone close to us who, that was the place they liked to exert power in our lives, and so we may, it may be, in our usual frame to say, well, and then look for the other person to take charge of us. You know, I'm trying to think of an example to help the listening audience to make this a little more concrete and a quick kind of a thing to start. And I keep coming back to the weight loss thing because I've been having so many people come in lately with that issue. So it could be something like someone who won't go for a job interview, and this is a case that I just had last week. She wouldn't go for a job interview because she felt she was 10 pounds overweight and that that would be all that they would see. So I would go if only I would lose 10 pounds, but I can't lose 10 pounds. And this only yes, but had been spinning around this potential possibility, you know, this possibility for a job. And it was so clear to me that is it really the weight or is it some kind of sense of value or self-worth that somehow became about appearance? So I don't know if that's an example that we I can think that, work from. I think that's a great example. Uh, uh, another example that jumps out is that we all, we all have friends who we engage in a conversation, and they agree with you, or they agree with you, or they agree with you, and then at the end they say, but this or but that. Mm. And, it, it, and it seems to be their way of having something really that they want to say, that they're too shy to say or too afraid to say. They don't feel that they can assert themselves and say, this is my belief, this is what's true for me. They're so used to having someone else tell them what to do and then defending themselves that they've lost sense of how to assert themselves. And in the same sort of way, this yeah. gal couldn't feel comfortable just being herself, asserting what's true about herself, unless she looked in a certain kind of way. Right, so she wouldn't go for the interview. This was actually, they had come to her. Right. And they she... Were, totally passed it up with all of these if onlys and yes buts. Even though she was a great, it sounds like, yes. she was a great fit in every other way. Obviously, they didn't care because they came to her. I mean, it wasn't even her having to stretch herself, but it had become so ingrained in her doubts and fears about herself. If she didn't look a certain way, then she was worth, you know, less than, so to speak. So we were able to work around the yes buts and the if onlys to help her see that that's data. It's information. Every time she would say, well, I would go, but, you know, I can't wear this suit or, but I, I weigh this. Right. So for her, the yes, but, or the only if served as paralysis. Yes. It, it, in this protect, case. it, it protected her, it sounds like. Yes. From challenging something about herself. Absolutely. So instead of then letting her, and as she started hearing, then she went into that place, I think, where our culture goes. Well, if I would just get out of my own way, then I'd be fine. She went into this self-blaming self-judging place, which I think is such a danger with so many of the self-help books, you know, just go do it kind of a thing. So then the work became, no, this is information. This isn't you having to get out of your own way. That will come, right. but this is information for you. Yeah. Your butts are information. So you were able to help her. It sounds like go from like the first level, which is the process where she gets paralyzed herself to the way she uses language to paralyze herself and then to listen to what the language really purpose it serves so that she can make a different choice about how to get there. Yes. And I, I think that is the way, it, that if we're going to yeah. undo that, that is the way we have to undo it that. It is kind right? of an undoing, isn't it? It's like yes. an unwinding and an untwisting, but it does have to come with, like you said, first being non-judgmental, which is not an easy task, so we're like tossing that out there, but at least it's something to attempt to be kind. Yes, and it's to kind of a deprogramming or something of our it automatic is. process, it I is. think. So listening to very much like you started off with your son and the driving the car, how many of us that drive can just get in and get from point A to point B, we're intact, we have no tickets, so obviously we did all we're supposed to do but don't have any memory of it. That's how automatic things can become. And that's how automatic we are then in relationships. If we go back to sort of the example I use, if you ask somebody that they were defending themselves and felt uncomfortable with asserting themselves, 
they would have no way of knowing that. They would just know that the other person had done something, hadn't accepted them, hadn't gotten something true about them. They would have no way of knowing what was beneath that or even what they needed to do. So how do we then give our listeners today the courage, the confidence, the compassion to stay the course, to even attempt something like this? Because we can get caught up sometimes in language and make something sound complicated, and it can be, yet I think there's a way to get people started in this unwinding, unbuckling, to find kindness inside themselves so that they can listen to their bodily experience and their words. Well, I think the gem for most people is in them discovering that starting to do that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we psychologists are fond of saying there are three really important things about change, support, support, and support. So I think that most people do better if there's someone who cares about them, who supports them, who f helps them facilitate it. Even though I, I think it is possible clearly for anybody to make changes inside of themselves, we are very social beings. Mostly we learn the automatic process in a social context. It's so much easier to make change. Whether It doesn't have to be a therapist, but it has to be somebody kind of in your life in some sort of way it makes it a lot easier for any of us to make any change. And sometimes that person in your life, if it's difficult to have a best friend or a community to share maybe this personal thing with, but at least say, be there. You don't have to share the personal nature, but kind of be there with me. Tell me when I yes, but you can ask for like reality checks without having to maybe share the deepest part of it. Tell me when I yes, but tell me if you see me not doing something that you think I can do. You can, we can ask our friends these things, which is very, very helpful reality checking in some way. Obviously, this show, listen to the shows, listen to how that can help, doing meditations, doing energy doing work that we right. put out today. We will make sure at the end of the show we have something for you. Many contexts and processes. I think having a clear intention that it's what you want to do, that you see it as an issue, that it could help you to change the issue, and allowing yourself, because some of us have to allow ourselves to receive support, That's right. allowing ourselves to receive support and then learning, non-judgmentally, of course, about the different ways in which we process the world. For some people, it just, just becoming aware of themselves of how they're actually doing automatic processing is sufficient for them to say, oh my gosh, I don't want to do that anymore. That's true. Some people are very self-driven. And Many people can say that, but then feel stuck with what's next. Because it does take some learning. Yes. It does take learning, and it, it does take, de like you said, a deprogramming. So as we kind of wrap up our show, for you listeners, hang, it, hang tight, because Dr. Ken will end this show with some type of a healing exercise to help you do this, to become aware of your butts and maybe release them. Make sure that you check out our website for more information, innerpathicprocess.com. And there's many, many layers there and lots of information. You can contact us through there. If you have anything um, that you want to share, any stories that you'd like us to read on air, please just send to Goldal or Ken at innerpathicprocess.com. We've covered, again, a ton of material in less than 30 minutes that can take lifetimes. But today we talked about how our butts, the if only's, get in our way and how underneath that, the gems underneath that, when we start mining, is a physical sensation of an experience. Doubts, fears, shames. Shames? Shame. Unfinished shames, business, yes. old wounds, old traumas that live so automatically under the surface that we're unaware and we go through life doing the same thing over and over again. So if you have anything that you've wanted to do or you notice in yourself as you're listening to this show, oh yeah, I say that one. I do that all the time. That is the beginning of consciousness, the beginning of becoming awake becoming aware. Remember the theme of this show is, are you awake? Our job is to poke and prod and wake things up inside. So if you find that happening, stay tuned and listen to this next exercise. And thank you for listening. I'd like to do a brief meditation on limitations. There's one of the ways in which butts impact our lives in sense of our paralysis or in sense of which our resistance inside of our own changes, our sense of our limitation for ourselves or how we limit ourselves, sort of our self-limitations. And I would like to have people start by first identifying, I think we'll do just one thing, 
kind of one thing that they see that they're either limited by themselves or limited by something in the external world, another person or something about themselves that stops them. Dr. Kaba had used the idea of weight as an example. So I'd like to have you just spend just a, a minute or so getting that in your mind and then pay attention as you say that to yourself if you have a sense in your body how it feels to you does it make you say tighten your jaw or tighten your sternum your chest tighten your pelvis see if there's a place in your body that's also serves as a resistance as you think about the limitations if anything pops up in your mind about the limitations pay attention to all those things and I want you to take a deep breath, quiet yourself, and as you think about those limitations, let yourself be kind of at peace with them. Accept that this is where you are in the moment, that these limitations are part of who you are, that in some sort of way they automatically serve to protect you from something likely. And as you consider that, then release them, accept them and release them. You don't need to judge them, just release them and let them be. And listen inside for, well, what do I want? And again, you may have to work a little bit with releasing the thing, either in the body or the mind or both, that may serve to stop that. But continue to kind of a sense of, sometimes again, it's like a weight or something wrapped around us and you just want to release the weight, open the chest open the pelvic girdle, relax the breathing. What is it I want? What's important about what I want? Is there a way in which I stop myself from that? Is there a way in which my stopping serves me? And listen to whatever is true about that for you, whatever is true in the moment about that for you, that there is some way in which there is something that maybe you get in your own way with, something you could be different with, something that's important to you, something that in this moment, in this moment, you're ready to consider trying something different. Not out of anger at yourself, not out of frustration with yourself, but just because it's something that feels important to you. So the transition from self-blame to what feels important, what feels important to try, what feels important to risk. Take, so take a few more moments to allow that to rise inside of you, to set aside your bodily response, to set aside your thinking response, to give energy to the trying of the thing, what's important. And again, the body may respond to try to stop it or your mind, but we're asking you to slow that process down and just focus on what's important. Thank you so much for listening to my show, Are You Awake? Remember to ask yourself that question each day. Am I awake? Do I have an awakened consciousness? It is, after all, the only way to find joy, bliss, vitality, and wellness. And as we close our show, remember, open your heart, open your crown, take a deep breath, listen. You never know what you're going to hear. Namaste. Thank you for joining Dr. Gudal Kaba in answering the question, Are you awake? Awakening the awareness that leads to joy, contentment, and passion with Dr. Gudal Kaba. Internalized stress can cause our bodies to become weak, less productive, and can cause illness. Finding wellness has been difficult until now. Introducing the Inner Peace Method for Awareness activation and enhancement by Dr. Goodall. Uniting exercises on a CD with a Native American liquid copal will unite your body and mind, bringing clarity, health, and presence. A multi-dimensional shift. This shift brings to wellness not only your body-mind, but your environment too. 
Discard your emotional and physical burdens with the Inner Peace Method. Don't miss this incredible technology that will empower you to reach total vitality and wellness. Order now. Tell your loved ones. Share the blessings that have been brought to you through Dr. Goodall. Go to innerpathicprocess.com and order yours today. Thank you.